pleasant day to the panel members and my co-presenters. I am Limuel J. Gigi, a faculty member of the Teachers College of the University of Bohol, Tagbilaran City, Philippines. The slide presents the structural buildings of the University of Bohol, where it is located at the heart of Tagbilaran City, the capital city of the Bohol province, as the coordinates indicated. Our higher education institution offers basic and tertiary levels, including teacher education programs. As a university, it envisions to transform lives for a great future, anchored in the core values of scholarship, character, and service. With this mantra, our College of Teacher Education envisages as an exemplary people molder. My study is apparently titled Outcomes-Based Education, Practices in Teaching Learning English, and training needs of higher education institutions. Many educationalists and experts in the field contend that OBE prepares the students to be effective, dynamic, productive, and successful in their chosen career, inasmuch as this curricular innovation is results-oriented and is focused on the performance of the students at a given task, which reflect on real-life situations, according to Makayan in 2017. Yusuf in 2014 mentioned that the key areas involved in the successful implementation of OBE are, but at limited to, formulation of learning outcomes, which includes institutional program courses and intended learning outcomes, teaching learning practices, assessment strategies, curriculum structure, performance indicators, and curriculum mapping. However, the change in the paradigm entailed the shifting of the teaching pedagogies, the types and methods of assessment, the formulation of learning outcomes, and the design of the curricula. With this educational revolution, many of the administrators and teachers find themselves challenged, especially the old school, who find comfort of their conventional way of teaching. Akmadiva, Hindi, and Spari in 2013 cited that many of these teachers refused to adapt to changes in the teaching process, and they still believe that their way of teaching is still relevant, effective, and appropriate to the type of learners in this 21st century. Whereas the new breed of educators hurdle on the articulation and alignment of designed activities and performance tasks due to lack of understanding of OBE. Pipito in 2019 strengthened this claim as she cited that OBE implementation become controversial among faculty members as the old school teachers require changes that come with a new system. Consequently, this resulted to students having no perception of differences between the OBE and the traditional education system. This can somehow be addressed when the teachers are provided with trainings and seminar workshops to prepare and equip them with the necessary skills, attributes, values, and competencies in order to address the learning gaps and challenges. It is then imperative for the school administrators to invest in the teacher's professional development. According to Valdez in 2012, he, she cited that it is necessary for higher learning institutions to upgrade their educational curricular offerings in order to meet the global market and at the same time to produce competitive graduates who are recognized in international standards. The primordial thrust of the study is to first, determine the teaching learning practices in English, second, to identify the problems encountered in the teaching learning of English, Third, to find out the training needs in the outcomes-based teaching and learning of English. And fourth, to investigate the correlation between the teaching learning practices and problems encountered, as well as the training needs. The implementation of outcomes-based education is grounded by several principles and theories, such as the Bloom's Mastery Learning Theory, Dr. William Spady's OBE concept, and Ralph Tyler's curriculum model. First is the Bloom's Mastery Learning, which emphasizes that teachers should have to increase variations in their teaching pedagogies inasmuch as learners in the classroom are diverse in nature and have different learning styles. Bloom further suggested that educators at all levels must differentiate instruction to better meet and address individual learning needs and categorize instructional methods which establish the level of performance that all students must demonstrate and master before succeeding to the next unit of learning. This theoretical framework has provided the teachers ideas in terms of the learning levels as reflected in the hierarchical ladder. Dr. William Spady's concept of OBE, on the other hand, is grounded on the three basic assumptions, which state that all learners can learn and succeed. Success breeds success. 
and learning institutions control the conditions of success. This means that OBA system builds everything on a clearly defined framework of exit outcomes, the beginning with an end in mind. Curriculum instructional strategies, assessment, and performance standards are developed and implemented to facilitate key outcomes, and these key dimensions are viewed as flexible means for accomplishing clearly defined learning ends. Hence, OBE focuses on increasing the student's learning, skills, attributes, and performance abilities, preparing them not only for work, but also for life. Finally, Ralph Tyler's curriculum model underpins the importance of learning outcomes that go beyond memorization and regurgitation. As curricular list, Tyler saw the importance of the learners being able to demonstrate knowledge and apply theoretical perspectives into practical situations. In his curriculum model, he cited four fundamental precepts in order for a curriculum to work. These are defining appropriate learning objectives, establishing useful learning experiences, organizing learning experiences to have a maximum cumulative effect, and evaluating the curriculum and revisiting those aspects that did not prove to be effective. His influence all throughout the academic arena continues to provide impact in the curriculum development. The study is quantitative qualitative. It makes use of a published tool of De Guzman, Idanio, and Omayan in 2017, and Britain, Letacy, Medina, and Err in 2008, and is modified to measure the six dimensions in the teaching learning practices, the problems encountered, and the training needs. The research instrument underwent phase valid validity, then pilot tested and subjected to reliability and validity tests using Cronbach's Alpha. An interview through the use of voice calls was also conducted to support and supplement the quantitative data. This study basically focuses on the teachers handling English courses, subject area coordinators or program chairs, both tenured and probationary in the four higher education institutions in Tagbilaran City. They should have been presently working in these four higher learning institutions. These respondents come from two colleges, namely the College of Teacher Education and the College of Liberal Arts. The HEIs include two private universities, one state university and one private college. It is acknowledged that one limitation of the study is the nature of the data on practices, which is only based on self-report of the respondents. Practices have to be observed and should be concretely observable. However, in this study, the data are based only in the self-report of the respondents. No validation nor documentary analysis to validate the respondent's self-report is done. The artist was employed to test the correlation between the variables, namely teaching learning practices, problems encountered, and training needs. Prior to the conduct of the study, the respondents were given consent forms where the voluntary participation and ethical considerations were discussed with them. Specifically, the study deals on the OBA teaching learning practices in English, which were gauged in six key areas. Formulation of learning outcomes, teaching learning activities, assessment strategies, curriculum structure, curriculum mapping, and performance indicators. This study further delves into the problems encountered and the training needs of the teachers relative to the OBE paradigm in the four tertiary education institutions. Basically, the study revolves around the practices of teaching learning English, problems encountered, and training needs in the context of outcomes-based education. A Likert scale is utilized in the study to ascertain the responses in the six key dimensions of teaching learning practices and the problems encountered, as well as the training needs. It can be noted that all six key dimensions of the teaching learning practices in English under the OBE principle were always observed, which means to say that these dimensions were highly practiced. Simply stated, the teachers handling English courses adhered to the requirements of OBE, starting from the formulation of learning outcomes down to the methods of assessment. According to Teacher A, expressing similar views with teachers C, F, and H, responded that learning outcomes as provided by CHED are only minimum learning competencies. In order to compete with the global market, the HEIs must exercise academic freedom by enriching their curricular offerings. This result reveals similarity with the study of De Guzman et al. in 2017, wherein both school administrators and faculty members had extant knowledge in the formulation of learning outcomes. Teacher A, who had more or less similar responses with that of teachers B, E, F, and H, disclosed 
that OPE encourages us to think of authentic assessments for the students to show whether they acquire learning or otherwise. But we need to bear in mind that these authentic assessments must reflect the learning objectives. They should go together. Teacher C, who will also express similar ideas with teachers D and E, stated that I have not yet perfected OBE. Every day is a learning experience and a challenge to be effective and efficient in learning OBE, especially when there are new ideas that pop out. At this time, I am still religiously reviewing my syllabus and instructional plans more often and make them as my guide in teaching English. I need to be in tune with other English teachers as well. Lagwador and Dotong in 2014 explained that faculty members with high level of knowledge and understanding on the implementation of OBE had also higher possibility to contribute in the realization of the objectives of OBE through practice. Of the dimensions in the problems encountered, there are only two which were identified as slightly serious. These are assessment strategies and curriculum mapping. However, these dimensions are less affecting in the total organization of the teaching and learning practices in English. This result was supported by teacher A, who shared similar ideas with teachers D and E, stating that we need to be careful with how we test the acquisition of learning of our students. And with this comes the strategy that we also need to consider. These areas must go together. They are indispensable. Teacher C, C who shared ideas similar to that of teachers D, E, F, H, and I, expressed that I was really confused and about to give up during the restructuring of the English curriculum following the OBE framework. Some of us were murmuring and called our colleagues from other schools for help. But the problem was, although we considered the shared mandates, the mapping differs from one school to the other. The rest of the dimensions are not a problem, hence not affecting the teaching and learning of English. Generally, all six key dimensions of the problems encountered do not affect the teaching and learning of English. In general, the training needs of the HEIs were less necessary. However, the teachers still stressed the need to enhance their capacity in terms of student-centered strategies, alternative assessment methods, curriculum mapping, and documentation evidence. The R test is employed to determine the correlation between the teaching learning practices and problems encountered, as well as the teaching learning practices and training needs. There is a significant degree of correlation between the teaching learning practices and the problems encountered. The correlation is apparently established when the teacher respondents rated the teaching learning practices always or highly practiced, and the problems encountered not a problem in general. In other words, the teaching learning practices and the problems encountered were both directly correlated or related with each other. It therefore suggests that when OBE practices in teaching learning English are always or highly practiced, there are no problems encountered in the practice of teaching learning English under the OBE principle. There is also a significant degree of correlation between the teaching learning practices and the training needs. The correlation is apparently established when the respondents rated teaching learning practices always or highly practiced and the training needs slightly needed. In other words, the teaching learning practices and the training needs were both directly correlated or related with each other. It therefore suggests that when OBE practices in teaching learning English are always or highly practiced, the training needs are not significantly nor greatly needed in the practices of teaching learning English under the OBE principle. Anchored on the aforementioned discussion and the summary of findings and stated and yielded in the result of the study, the succeeding conclusions are drawn. The practices of teaching learning English among the teachers handling English courses in the four HEIs in Tagbilaran City adhered to the perspective and principle of outcomes-based education. This was attested as the six key dimensions, namely formulation of learning outcomes, teaching learning activities, assessment strategies, curriculum structure, curriculum mapping, and performance indicators were always or highly practiced by the teachers. Although they still encounter slight problems, especially in the key areas of assessment strategies and curriculum mapping, these problems did not significantly affect the teaching learning of English in the OBE paradigm. Thus, they also concluded the trainings were only slightly needed. This statement can be drawn from the fact that there are no problems that significantly affect the practices of teaching and learning of English in the OBE paradigm. In addition, it can also be said 
that the practices as to the teaching learning of English in the new framework adopted by the higher learning institutions of Tagbilaran City was already in place and well established. Dr. William Spady's OBE concept stated that the success of the OBE implementation lies in developing and building outcomes in a clearly defined paradigm wherein curriculum, instructional pedagogies, assessment, and performance standards are viewed as avenues to develop the desired learners. As Ralph Tyler's curriculum model stated, that learners should be able to exhibit knowledge and skills from what they learn, and it can only be realized when the areas of formulation of learning outcomes, teaching learning activities, assessment strategies, curriculum structure, curriculum mapping, and performance indicators are already strengthened and well designed. Based on the foregoing findings and conclusions of the study, the researcher offers the following relevant recommendations. First, provide seminars and workshops that strengthen the skills of the teachers in the aspect of teaching and assessment strategies and curriculum mapping. Second, revisit the English curricula for enrichment, especially in the areas of assessment strategies and curriculum mapping. Third, Conduct a tracer study that would gauge the employability of the graduates of OBE to see the effectiveness of the new paradigm. This must also include the graduates' competencies in English communication. Fourth, conduct a study on OBE, especially in the area of formulation of indicators to measure attainment of outcomes, especially for future researchers. And fifth, implement the proposed improvement program for the calibration of the practices in teaching and learning of English in the OBE framework. The study has brought the following impacts or outcomes. First, the results or findings were disseminated to the HEIs. Second, with the dissemination of findings, the HEIs were able to enhance their monitoring, assessment, and evaluation tools. There was also a benchmarking conducted among departments and colleges of these four HEIs with the English curricula as the leading sample given. There was a plan to benchmark to the other schools, however, deferred due to the pandemic. As to the faculty program proposal, items rated the lowest in each of the six dimensions were taken into account. And finally, this research presented is already published in our university journal. As to this slide, I am now presenting to you the cited references. To end my presentation, I would like to leave you with this quote. Change is the end result of all true learning. Thank you very much.